Um, I've got a duplex. This is the first time being on the call. Thanks, guys. I've learned a lot. Yeah, about. welcome. You got some geniuses. Um, I've got a uh, – I've currently got a duplex in which I'm trying to um, – to work a deal out on and I, I want to what I've got is I the seller is the the value of it's they're wanting like between 235 and 240 thousand um, dollars you know it needs it's about 75 percent complete so a builder is they actually is actually the seller turns out he's actually doing another house that I'm flipping um, wish I would have known that but now there's a realtor involved anyway blah 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 um, so my own mistake there but what I'm trying to figure out is I've got a hard money lender in place that will that will take out that will do the short term loan for me to do um, the renovations. So the duplex is about seventy five percent finished, needs about sixty k in work, and when it's done, it'll be worth about one hundred and twenty five a foot. So it'll be probably I don't know somewhere in the four fifteen four twenty range. So I can do a cash out refinance after 90 days seasoning is the best it's the best deal unless you guys i'm putting that out there to anybody there who has a lender that has any less um seasoning uh as far as putting money on title so that's the scenario that i'm trying to run now the issue that i'm having is of course the person who owns the property um is is does not want does not want me to take title more so than than ownership more so than i need to until it's done you know it's kind of the, the builder's kind of doing me a favor as far as he's going to allow his original financing to stay in place i'm going to make his more his, his monthly mortgage payments and then 90 days from now when i'm complete with the transaction then i'll be able to refi him at 70 to 75 percent cash out the hard money lender in the, in the other side the thing that i'm trying to do is i want to make it so that everybody's happy and and everybody's the guy selling the property is happy with the verbiage on the on the uh, on me taking title, and then also that the lender is going to be happy with that. Um, as far as anybody who's dealt with any kind of cash out refi stuff with limited term, Rick, uh, with is the, are you going to get title when you start doing the work before you start doing the work on the house? Yes, that's what I was. That's what I'm working on now. With the attorney is is how do I? I know I need to instruct him, instruct him specifically. But is it based on, because right now the verbiage that he's got is just basically a default. Uh, LLC X owns said piece of property. When I pay him, I'm giving him like $20,000 down. So I will, then I take 50% ownership. Well, obviously I don't take 50% ownership. I only want whatever. You, you I'm, want, you don't want common interest ownership. Okay. The minute you give him any money at all, you make sure that's done through escrow and you exchange that for the deed to the property that you own it. But it, he's not going to let me do that. Then don't do it. Don't do it. Don't break the rule. This is the rule. Don't put any cash into a property of any significant amount that you don't own. You And I mean 100% you hold title. Ever. Okay. Can't do it. You, you would not be able to bifurcate your partial interest. Uh, you have a clouded title. Nobody could move any direction with it. It's a messy, messy, messy deal. Okay. So unless he's willing to sign over title completely to me, is there a way to protect him in that deal? What's he want protection from? From me, obviously not, not performing. Well, if you give him 20,000, you've just performed, right? Correct. So that's your performance right there. You you give the title company 20 in exchange, they give you a deed. And that's it. You've performed. There's nothing else he needs to worry about. Except Rick's got to make the payment on the existing mortgage. This is a subject two deal plus yeah, 20 grand I'm, cash I'm, down. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm making those payments. But I mean, at the end of the day, worst case scenario, I don't. I mean, say I do but then I can't get a refinance at the end of that. I'm guessing. Correct. That's your other problem. Right. right. And now the way, the way markets are looking, that's probably not going to be. Got it. Okay. To be honest, it sounds good on paper. Too squirrely. Got you. I think I'd work on no money down deals. Okay. Something you've got, the way you describe it, um, and you should go back and listen to the tapes and hear yourself describe it. There's a lot of these, if this happens, then that happens. And this has got to happen down the road. And I've got to be guaranteeing this. And there's all the, it's too much swirling dervish stuff that, to, for this amount of money for a hundred thousand dollar net payday or whatever it's going to be. Okay. It's too right. much risk. 
Okay. That's, that's what I would say. I would say it's just too much risk. Pass. And, it, well, I'm guessing at the end of the day, if, I don't take, if they don't let me have full title on it anyway, I don't get a deed, it doesn't matter. That's the number Correct. one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because you yeah. get lots of deals out there. We, we look at them all the time where there's $100,000 equity and you don't put any money into it. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, then I will quit worrying about it and not do it. Sorry, we just killed Damn your it. deal, man. But, hey, better to not do the deal and – and to get stuck in that thing and 20 grand out the door and can't refi and then the lender takes the house back and you don't own it anyway and blah, 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 all that stuff, man. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you, if you still wanted to do this deal, I don't know. I'm just thinking, okay, what could he do, Jeff? If I was Rick, I would yeah, tell the you seller. Could you could uh, buy it subject to, he deeds it over to you, start making the payments. You do the work at the end of the time when you get the refi, he gets the twenty thousand and whatever yeah. else we to give him. Yeah, the issue with that, I mean, the issue with him is he's not going to want to. He's not going to want to give up title. So, it well, but, you're, but see, you're putting your money into his house. If not, no, I'm, I'm with that, and I'm saying uh, uh, he's fine with. He would be fine with taking. It doesn't matter. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I, there's no sense in me trying to explain to you something that yeah. if there's a rule that can't be broken, it can't be broken. Sure. <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna change your mind. So, um, mm -hmm. it, it's. It's okay. It's not. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're here to give you the best, safest advice can, on how to make money quickly. Okay. No, it makes risking as little as possible of any of your assets, and that's sure. that's what we don't. I mean, that's well, our business. It's not my 20 grand. It's the hard money, guys. I'm not, I'm yeah. not putting a dollar in this. Yeah, the well. What I'm doing is I'm deploying my crews to fix, to fix the property. If somebody else is going to take all of the financial risk, if you've got a money partner and he's going to take that risk yeah. and you're okay with that, then you don't have to worry about it as long as you're not putting your money into it. Yes, I'm not putting my money into it. Not if your personal guarantee. Money, then that's different. Right. No personal guarantee. You said I'm giving him twenty thousand, so I thought you. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, the hard money lender. I'm I'm borrowing from a hard money from a local guy here that we've done a bunch of business with. I'm borrowing the ninety thousand dollars from him, so I wouldn't be putting any of my own money in there. Yeah, well, then, borrowing it. So once again, I think what you got to do is you got to look through all this stuff. Make sure your lawyer gives you the blessing. The lawyer would probably give you the same advice. Don't ever put any money into a house you don't own. Right. You don't do the bided, you know, communal interest type things. Right. More importantly, I would worry about the, the exit strategy on the other end. I think, you know, three months from now, this world's going to look a lot different, a lot different. Right. But uh, the, the, it's not, I mean, it's a buy and hold piece of property. It's two, two sides, completely redone duplex, less than a quarter of a mile from a major army base that it graduates I don't know what 250 people a week. So the VRBO potential of it is 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 pretty high. I mean, I know current market conditions and what's going on, but it's not a it's not a bad property. Um, it's one that could make a, a pretty pretty good cash flow every month, um, and would be one that would be a long term hold. But just, if you can get that sure long term financing, everything you know to make sure you're yeah. not putting yourself in financial risk when you borrow from a hard money guy. Typically, they want your firstborn. Ten, it's just ten percent. It's not bad. Yeah. I've done a bunch of stuff with it. I've made him a bunch of money on flows. So, anyway, anyway, but um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.